Hello, universes, or fellows and things of the universe of universes, however your mind perceives things. I wanted to begin um, by introducing the following poem, or by chattering before I read the poem, and then chit-chatting after I read the poem. And the first thing that I really want to discuss was attitude and it really goes back to an address I made last night when I discussed the prejudice of watching a, a video clip of uh, poetry and words in particular and instead of paying attention to the words pointing out silly little things like alcohol that would uh, lead you to denounce what you see on account that it's the act of a, I don't know, some immature cliche, what do you have it, alcoholic or what have you. And um, I, w I would just say that this is not about that. And that uh, these are just purely records. These are records of the fact that these poems exist. And furthermore, I film these poems for the purpose of, uh, I believe that in the modernization of our time, as my stepfather once said that, um, you know, filmmakers are sort of the scribes of the present, but I don't think that takes away from writing in itself and language in itself and literature in itself and art in itself. And for that matter, I think um, to, to take words and manifest them and have somebody read them without putting them on the screen, without making you actually see the words, but making you listen to the words, I think that that adds to what is actually a value to a poem, and not that I discourage reading, but that I, rather that I encourage um, different forms of exploring literature and art and anything that has to do with communication towards, you know, the rest of the world. And uh, with that, I would like to read my following, the next following poem here, off of the book to come out. And uh, this poem is just simply titled 33 for now. I, I'm just really giving them numbers, like Shakespeare's sonnets right now, as opposed to titles. But if you want a title, we would call it Vanishing, reeling, newness chirps. And that uh, goes like this. And this is for those who dislike the imagery of alcohol on film, by the way, before I, before I read the poem. Vanishing, reeling, newness galaxies, cunts, graciousness, charming ruins, filming heat, ambition, happening, learning, hippies, soothing grass goddess, Inspiring wishes, orgasming, darling woman flames, carnality, thrilling, thriving spirituality, appreciation luck, momentum, grinning hearts, sapphires, Drifting fantasies, amazement miracles, stirring timelessness, savoring, lovers, strumming happiness, wind, dreaminess, ganja thoughts, paradise, filming, Occurring spectrum, 
dream, breathing serenity, kindling, caring irises, saps, weeping, ocean waves, praying, tenderness, embracing, delights, chills, lingering, adoration, smoke, soaking, peace, beauty, enamoring wings, flutters. And that would conclude, conclude that would conclude the poetry reading portion of tonight's uh, address, tonight's discussion, if you will, tonight's, tonight's um, thing to share. And I would like to uh, conclude by talking a little bit about what I wrote more stylistically than in particular for I'd like to lead you to, um, you know, make your own of the particulars. But I, I would like to address the idea that um, poetry can come down to the fact that it's just an array of words. And the idea is that whoever the poet is chose to group, you know, these random words together. And even if they are, you know, absurd in their randomness, the human will, whosoever it is, mine for example, grouped them together in whatever concoction it did. And this leads me to believe that there's actually an insight there's actually an insight within what you can grasp out of that. Of course, I have to add that such consideration and contemplation would really only interest a truly intelligent, intellectual, wisdom-seeking creature, and that I absolutely dismiss, I absolutely lose about 98.6% of potential people, you know, by seeing, by watching these videos or by reading these poems, because quite honestly, I am saying fuck you to anybody who can't understand these things, because most people who can't understand these things just go out of their way to insult it, and I would say anybody whose priority is insulting is a fool and that um, they're not resourceful, they're not just looking to get something out of something, and, you know, you know, furthermore, furthermore, just um, have a little bit of humanity in you, and uh, that's the kind of thing that I promote. As for the content itself in the selected poem, you know, you don't have to like it. I, I can give, I can give an infinite fuck less, because, you know, if it takes 2,000 years for one person to like it, I know that that will happen. Uh, I, I believe that tomorrow somebody will like it, and I believe that, um, damn it, I keep saying, um, and this is what I'm talking about, this is the whole point to me of poetry and of what I write, it's consciousness of what you say and the effects of what you say. And so saying um just makes me look like a fool or a bumbling drunk, I suppose, depending on who you are, or maybe it makes you think I'm just human and vernacular. It makes me love the quote Nietzsche in this book here. It's called Human Ought to Human, when Nietzsche really criticizes the perfectionist in thinking that we can somehow eradicate ourselves from moments of error and clumsiness and that we can somehow, you know, have moral perfection. And that, um, on the other hand, we shouldn't just be, you know, spiritual and that we shouldn't just, you know, that we should just be virtuous as opposed to, you know, as opposed to, like, devising these facts, you know, it's really quite silly. Anyway, I have 10 seconds left on this video, so I want to say goodnight, peace out, I love you, you're my friends, uh, we'll be talking soon.